Hello viewers, CPGT here. Okay, into Lagos Group 3. This is a combo we all know about. Or maybe you don't know about. Maybe I'm talking rubbish. But anyway, this was really fun. This was really fun. I had a lot of fun with these races. First off, we are on the R4M Shadow GT account. And we're starting at the back just to test out just the waters, you know, see see how things are going down from the back of the pack. Starting 15th, let's see where we can get up to from here. It's only a five lap race, so not too long, about seven and a half minutes or so, to try to get the job done. Now that was a really awful turn four. We actually get overdone, overdone? Um, overturned by this uh, sort of Lexus on the outside. Commits to the outside line, can't quite make it stick. So we're up into uh, 14th, up behind our fellow Lamborghini Huracan user. Now the Huracan is a, it's the fastest car on the leaderboard, but it's a really hard car to, to drive. It's, it's almost like the, or well, it's very like the Audi R8. As I come in, <laughs> that kind of proves how difficult it is to drive. That was a pretty shocking display of driving there for myself. Luckily, I didn't completely bin this guy. We can continue to fight another day. Um, but I think a lot of people, I suppose myself included, going for this car, given that it's the top time on the leaderboard, but not realising that it's actually ridiculously hard to master. So sometimes it's actually quicker to choose a car that's easier to drive. But we're slowly getting the hang of it. Up the main straight, we're going to get past our fellow Huracan user here. Up into 30, on the brakes, into turn 1 and we've got the job done there as we come through the center s then attention turns i guess i, I suppose to the to the guy ahead the hungarian driver with the 0.5 second penalty hopefully you could see it with one of those pixels on the screen just there as i zoomed in as we come down to a turn four braking zone then and uh, that wasn't enough for me to get past him but it was enough to get very close and it gets quite a poor run out of here but the Huracan is actually very quick in a straight line. If you can get your exits right from the corners, this car really does have a lot of straight line speed. I think that's the key to unlocking the full potential of this machine, which is kind of slide it a little bit through the corners because it really does slide quite a lot. You kind of have to use that to your advantage so you can get the power early and then get some good speed down the straights. Okay, so two laps done there onto the third lap and this is where things really begin to kick off as they no uh, normally do when you're in the mid pack i'm going to come through aggressively here with some contact but no penalty so you mad stewards obviously stewards um deciding that that one was 100 percent legal to be fair i don't think it was too bad coming down uh, towards the turn four braking zone and we have a car off up ahead another lamborghini there up into 9th, we're going to go up into 8th here as we get the momentum past this guy. Uh, gaining another position there. Up against the Porsche, and the Porsche was a popular choice for this race because it seems to, be, it seems to just have really good handling through this section here especially. It doesn't have good straight line speed though, that is its main weakness. And therefore it's quite easy to overtake it if you get a good exit onto the main straight. That is probably our main objective right now. We're going to go for a move here. The space does open up takes the Albon line. I'm not Hamilton though, so we're not going to completely send it. We're going to be patient. We're going to wait a couple more corners, wait for the main straight, and that is going to be the best overtaking opportunity. He makes a bit of a hash of turn 11, following him through Jun Cao, or Jun Sao, to be precise. Probably not precise at all. I'm going to have loads of Brazilian people in the chat telling me how awful my pronunciation is. So here, here he goes then. He, he's going to commit to the left-hand side. He wants to go defensive. But look at this, that Porsche just does, doesn't have the steam, doesn't have the, the top speed. It just runs out of speed, uh, of steam, of speed. I could use both words, I suppose. Runs out of speed and steam. Um, I guess it's steam powered anyway, judging by its speed. Okay, so up into seventh. Now we're looking ahead to the two guys ahead, obviously. Um, we can't look ahead to people behind you, can you? Unless, how would that work? I don't know, with a mirror, I suppose. Okay, so into uh, turn one, lap five, final lap then, lap five of five. We have an Atenza in fifth. And guess what? Sixth place is right there for the taking. Can we get sixth place? It would just be written in the stars, wouldn't it, if that were to happen? Out of turn three, down towards turn number four. 
I'm just calling it turn four so I can't butcher the pronunciation. A lot easier that way, isn't it? Come through here. Click the apex nicely. You only want to go as wide as the curb on the exit. You don't want to touch the AstroTurf because it will suck you off and you don't want that. Or maybe you do, I don't know. Coming through here, it goes very wide. I'm just going to go up the inside on the way out. And thankfully the next corner is a right-hander, so up the inside. Like, he's going to try to fight it around the outside valiantly, but fails miserably. Uh, so we move up to sixth place. I don't want sixth place, I want fifth. We can potentially get that here up against the Mazda Atenza. Goes a little bit deep into this one. Coming into turn 11 then. This is really all about setting himself, or setting myself up for a move on him. Coming up the main straight towards the line. It's going to be a drag race essentially. So as we come through here, if anything, I'm too close because I can't get the slingshot now. I can't get any momentum to go past. So he's going to commit to the left-hand side. I'm just trying to time his momentum. And as I pull out here, I just do it a tiny bit too late, and I just go into the back of him. We're going to have another attempt at it here. As we come up to the line, you see the speed of the Hurricane. I almost did it half a tenth away from getting fifth. But ultimately, I fail. Finishing sixth, obviously. Okay, so that was a fun race, actually. We're going to go for the Mercedes here. Let's see what this car is all about. And it's very much a popular choice these days in Group 3. So let's see how we do then because this is quite an interesting race here because everyone else pretty much well everyone else in the top eight other than me is in the Porsche 911 so we can directly see how they compare to each other here the Mercedes and the Porsche as uh, we come down into well, turn one spot our braking zone uh, braking point click the apex nicely the, the finish driver ahead goes a little bit deep into turn one and it kind of uh, miss um, mispositions him for the exit onto this back straight and thankfully I can just get this slipstream with the Italian who moves across kindly for me as we come down towards turn four hitting our mark of the uh, 100 meter board and a uh, bit of contact there not sure why but hey ho it happened I'm up to second though main thing here really is just to make sure that we don't get overtaken again of course but also just to make sure the driver ahead does not get too far away and uh, ideally not out of the slipstream range. At the moment, he's 1.1 seconds ahead, so we are in the slipstream range. So just have a nice, tidy infield here, and then we can start gaining on that main straight, the very long main straight. Slipstream, I mean, we're going to see how much we can gain on that, on that main straight. It just shows you, and give you a demonstration of how important the toe is. So turn 11, right to the edge of the curb, into turn 12, as you come through here on the exit, you can use plenty of the curb on the exit. So 0.936 behind at this point here. Let's see what that comes down to by the time we get to the braking zone of turn one. So it's a very long straight, especially with the uphill nature of the beginning of the straight. It really does help with the slipstream. Down to 0.6, down to 0.53. So pretty much four tenths of a second just gained purely by being the slipstream. You don't have to do anything there. And, uh, well, part of that was down to, of course, the Mercedes being better in a straight line. The Porsche is not that great in a straight line, but some of that would have been down to the slipstream as well. And he's going to move over to the left-hand side to try to break the toe, just follow him exactly, just to make sure you get every possible gain that you can get. Even if it's half a tenth, you do it. You always gain everything that you can possibly gain. So we're going to gain on him actually very quickly here. On lap two, pulled away slightly from the finish driver, and we're now right on the tail of... We're not right at the tail, we're almost there. Give it another give it another main straight and we should be right on him. So through that corner, plenty of grass, that's basically the line. To get two on the curb, two on the grass, turn into a semi lawn mower, and jobs are good and through that one. Okay, through turn ten. Okay, nice clean apex on the exit, nice and clean. This is the good thing about the Mercedes, it's definitely a car I'd recommend for a lot of people who are maybe new to the game and not sure which car to drive in Group 3. The Mercedes is always a good option, it's just very simple, easy to drive, doesn't have too much drama. Maybe a little bit understeery, but sometimes that's good because the Lamborghini is a very quick car but it's very oversteering, that can be very hard to manage. Understeer, a tiny bit of understeer can actually keep the car settled and stable. Setting a 31.2, uh, fastest lap of the race, around the outside, and I thought this move was on, there was a bit of contact there, 
and he just switched back ahead. I think that move was going to happen until that contact occurred. So we're going to have to go again here, recollect ourselves, and come back for a second attempt. Again, he's going to try to break the toe, but I'm not having any of it. I'm following it exactly again. You can see just how much speed we're gaining. Not close enough to go for a move, though. Into turn four on the exit. Now, Porsche looks fairly planted on the way out of the corners. Uh, so I'm not going to gain on him here enough to go for another move. I'm going to have to kind of basically follow him. I think through this section here, we've said it earlier, the Porsche is really good on the infield. Uh, Mercedes is decent. I don't think as good as the Porsche. So this section really is just about just trying to keep up and give ourselves a chance on the main straight. Not going for the move then. Just waiting, waiting, holding off, waiting for the right time. It's almost like the Le Mans vs Ferrari film with Matt Damon screaming at the pit lane. Wait, wait for it, wait for it. Now, imagine Matt Damon telling you what to do. Just wait for the right moment and then spring your attack. And that's going to be right now pretty much. So Matt Damon is he's telling me to go for it from the pit lane. As we come through, I'm quite far back here, but this is a perfect slingshot range. Look at this, massive slingshot. So I'm going to pretend to go to the outside, open up the inside and go flying into the narrowest of gaps. There's basically my car plus one pixel gap there and I went for it and just succeeded. Uh, that guy's probably absolutely truly mesmerised by uh, right now by what just happened. I don't think you can fully comprehend what has just happened there. He's being completely done over. As we come down towards turn four once again, on the brakes at the 100 boards and he comes back for a savage lunge which was quite simply never going to work. I braked exactly where you have to brake for that corner. Any later, you're going wide. That's exactly what happened. Uh, it, that, that was just never going to work in a million years. Or in fact, two, two million years. Not, not a million, two million. That was never going to work in two million years. In fact, I might even go as far as saying it wouldn't work in three million, but that might be a stretch, I'm not sure. We've moved up into, into the lead of the race from third slow but steady progress but now the race kind of turns on its head this is very much now a defensive race with one and let's say a quarter laps left to go I have to turn my attention just to making sure I can solidify my position and make sure I can get away we'll see how this toe affects the Porsche behind so we're going to come out of that corner 0.438 roughly uh, or four and a half tenths ahead so by the end of the straight let's see how much that has changed. I was gaining four tenths on the Porsche. The Porsche is barely gaining one tenth on me. It's gained pretty much one tenth. That just shows you how much of a difference there is in the straight line speed of these cars. And sometimes I think to to aid your overtaking it's better to go for a car that does have straight line speed. Depends on the track of course. But if you go for the car that doesn't have straight line speed sometimes it can be very hard to overtake. Given that the best overtaking opportunity is that main straight. It's very close here could go for a move although this Finnish driver isn't quite the Italian driver he doesn't have the the dive bombing expertise although to be fair the Italian didn't have any expertise either okay end of this lap and we're gonna come through the final corner here it's really just a case of making sure we don't make a stupid mistake and that's basically it looking behind and the Finnish driver it looks like he's completely bottled it although I would like to watch the replay and see exactly what happened there as we cross the line, we're going to win the race. So, solid result. Third on the grid. First on the podium. Beating all of the 9-11s. 74th win on this Ram Shadow account. This is what happened then. Right, this, is the, this is the overtake. Just slotting into that tiny gap. He left basically exactly the width of that AMG Mercedes. And I said, oh, okay, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Here's the lunge. That was never going to work in two, possibly three million years. Uh, so we go through there. He loses out to the Finnish driver. And then this is what happened at the end. He goes for, well, dive bomb of the millennia. It was never going to work. And then just to rub it in, he just, just completely battered him wide. Uh, yeah, just to rub it just to rub it in. Got himself a five-second penalty. GG, mate. So this guy in fourth is just, like, minding his own business. And that guy just gets completely obliterated off. And then the guy in second gets a penalty. So fourth to second for free for this guy fair play so that was a, quite a funny little moment at the end there probably wasn't funny for the finished guy though it must be said 
Okay, so I, I, I thought I'd try the 911, see how it see how it fares around this track. It, it must be quite good. People, a lot of people are using it. I could see in that previous race though, it doesn't have the straight line speed. So you, obviously you have to make the most of the infield, make sure that you get the gap before you get to the main straight. Now this, this is quite a good test here because we have the Porsche behind. We have a Nissan GTR behind as well. The Nissan GTR being one of the quickest cars in a straight line is absolutely ridiculously quick. You know, the McLaren F1 is what I always thought was the quickest car in a straight line, but that Nissan GTR can pretty much keep up with it. The GTR is seriously fast in a straight line. So if that car gets behind me on that main straight, it's probably going to get past. So we have to make sure that we don't get too caught up with that group behind. Now this first lap, the finish driver was making a fair few little mistakes, nothing major, but just enough that we were losing track of the guys ahead slightly, not much, but it's just, in a race as finely poised as this, you need to make sure that you're not making uh, big errors. It makes another big error here. And you can see this, that gap opens up immediately. Not really close enough to go for a move around the outside. So I have to kind of still settle into fifth. This is where this race really kicked off. This is where things went really up to the maximum level of banter. Now they're going three abreast into turn one there. We've got our lunging Italian guy in the lead up against uh, the PHX drivers. And uh, Matthew there going very deep. Uh, I think four slightly wide. We're going to go around his outside. Uh, so he's going to go down to fifth as we just get in ahead. He's going to have to back out. There he goes. Still keep a, keep an eye on Matthew though because his um, appearance is not done yet. Uh, he's going to still make an appearance in this race. Okay, so we have PS, PHXFW into the lead now. We've got Mr. Lungy Italian in second. Finnish guy, uh, guy here thinking about a move at the top of the hill. Doesn't quite go for it. Um, so looking around the outside here, the Finnish guy goes defensive. Then I look around the outside. Not quite going to work for me there. We've got the... Um, Got Matthew on their outside, a bit of contact between the two of us. And it's contact with myself and the finished driver. The Mercedes comes through, past me, past um, the Porsche as well. The Italian comes in for a big lunge on the leader out of nowhere, just completely obliterates him around the outside of uh, the finished driver. Into third, this is really all kicking off. I can't commentate on everything that's happening. It's really all just going a bit mental at the moment. And is Matthew here going to be able to get the, the whole shot? That's not really the right word, is it? Going to get the, the jump on the Italian up to the line because the Porsche isn't the best in a straight line. As we come up to the finish, Matthew's gone from fifth to second, almost first. It was ridiculously close. 0.0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.0. 0. 0.0. 0.0. 0.0. Jeez, I can't read the number. This is what happened, though. The lunge Italian, living up to his name, just completely smashing that guy off. Poor guy. He was just about to win the race and um well courtesy of the penalty system doesn't get a penalty would you know okay so final race and we're gonna bust out the proper memes here we're going for peugeot there it is the messiah the god of cars the peugeot rcz my mum has one of these so it must be good hi mum anyway uh, lap one of five in position five of 16. this one this was a funny race. This was a good one. The Peugeot is actually a really solid car around here. At the time of recording, the Peugeot had a top 10 time. There was a Peugeot in the top 10, would you believe it? Um, so now we have the Nissan behind. We spoke about that Nissan on the previous race. It's really good in a straight line, so that's a threat. It's, quite, it's kind of annoying to have that kind of car behind you. Because if you start fighting with the group ahead, then you've got this really fast rocket behind you, which can easily overtake you. And it can be really frustrating to try to hand, handle that. To try to make sure that we can get ahead, get away through the infield, and ideally try to pull away as quickly as possible from that Nissan. Now through here, I'm just going to go into the back of the, into the Porsche. So a bit of a mistake for myself, not quite judging that one. Finally, falling into the clutch of the Nissan, annoyingly. I have to try to make sure turn 11 here and then 12 are good so that we can pull away. We do have the slipstream of the guys ahead, thankfully, which should help slightly. We've got a similar cast here. We've got PHX Matthew and Golfi, lungy Italian boy, uh, in second. So those are the two guys who finished first and second in the other in 
reverse order in the previous race. And Nissan isn't quite close enough on this occasion, although he is going to seriously gain. Is he going to gain? Not quite enough. Luckily I have the slipstream. If I didn't have the slipstream, then it would be a different story. He does close up on the brakes though, but not enough. So trying to pick our way through the two Porsches here. The guy in third, basic Ollie, just dropping off. You can see the gap opening up to second. And this is the problem with qualifying this far back in the order. Um, you just really are at the mercy of the guys immediately in front of you. If they start making mistakes, then you have to get past them very quickly. Otherwise, you're just going to get slowed down. The guys ahead are going to get away. Uh, Finnish guy driving a little bit wide there. We're going to look for the move on the outside. Try to pick up the toe of Ollie up the hill. I am marginally ahead. And at the, mo uh, at the final moment, uh, the Finnish driver just backs out. We go a little bit deep. Or we can recover in the second half of that corner. It's a slot into fourth. And a fast forward here and try to make sure we keep up with the uh, Porsche in third. It's all about, all about that final corner there onto the back straight. Not really gaining all that much, although the Porsche is still in the slipstream just about of the guy in second. Setting a 31.9 on the second lap. So Oli going a little bit deep into turn one. It's going to cost him slightly through turn two and three. Center S. Now coming through here, I'm going to get a really nice exit. Go into the slipstream. I'm going to try to trick him here by pretending to go to the right and then just immediately go to the left at the last moment. The space is there. He left a car width. We've seen that before and I just invade the space and go up into third. So invading spaces has been um, a really a good theme of this video. If they left the car width and I've gone for it, if, if the space is there, well, you might as well just send it. Go full send, mate. We've got the position up to third. Now this is where this is where the race can really go one of two ways. It's really a case of waiting for this Italian to go for this lunge. If he doesn't do it, if he plays a sensible and waits for the final lap, the top two will be the top two. But it's really a case of waiting for this Italian to do something stupid because he was throughout this entire day, for this entire session, he was just fully sending it at any available opportunity. He hasn't done it here. But this is where things get a little bit interesting. On the final lap, as we come down towards turn four, uh, he does go for the move. So he's made the move work, and he goes up into first place against Matthew. So first and second fighting. This is possibly the chance to catch up. This is always the thing you're looking for. Please have a battle. Please have a fight. And that means we can catch up. The two guys behind start fighting, the Nissan and the Porsche, and uh, Matthew's going to send it there into this one. Italian guy's not having any of it, sends it back. They are really a fighting now. This is turned into a big war. He just edges him out onto the grass. And courtesy of that, he's going to get a nice five second penalty. He's getting quite friendly with those penalties, isn't he? The stewards don't really like him. And courtesy of going onto the grass, Matthew could not get any grip coming out of that turn. I'm up into second. And I'm going to win the race here. As long as I don't get overturned here. It's going to be a drag race between myself and Matthew, but I've actually pulled away massively there, coming out of the final quarters. We look behind. The guy ahead is going to get a five second penalty, courtesy of yet another lunge and silly mistake. As we come up to the line, it's going to be a race win, quite miraculously. The Nissan is just going to overhaul Matthew on the line with that straight line speed. He's going to finish second, and our lunging Italian friend is going to go down to sixth. I did ask him if he wanted to be part of R4M because I think he's a perfect candidate. He would be a really prominent member of the group and he said maybe, but I think it's going to be a definitely because, well, you just saw how good he was at being an R4M member. But there we go. I really enjoyed this race or these races. Really good fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.